So let's continue with section number one from chapter seven, which is essentially just mechanisms and pathways. Let me revisit the elementary rate law. If you just stumble upon this video, you should go to my videos in chapter three because there I explain you what's elementary rate law. Essentially, this is where, let's say, you have a, a reaction to products and the elementary rate law says you that this exponent goes here in every concentration. So we only have here A, but let's say we got A, B, and C. We will have a rate of reaction of A will be K times concentration of A to the A power times concentration of B to the B power times concentration of C to the C power. Essentially it's that. And this is called elementary rate law. We actually studied zero order, first order, and second order. That's the most typical ones in the nature and in industry. But of course, there are many others that we aren't considering here. Actually, there are many non-elementary rate laws. What does that mean? Is like ideal gas, you got non-ideal gases or real gases. We got also non-elementary rate laws. There, okay. I show you this example, you get this methyl hill, CHO3, will turn out to be methane and carbon monoxide. What would you expect? Expect you got this here, so in theory, if it were elementary rate law, the rate of reaction of CH3, CHO will be the constant times the concentration to the A power. The A power in this case is 1, so that means power that to the 1. But Experimental results and analysis and data show that it's not to the one power, but to the one half power, 1.5 or three halves. So that's kind of strange. You will say, where do you got the other, let's say, 0.5? And the case here is that it's non-elementary. So that's why it's different and analyzing it from an elementary rate law perspective will not make that much sense. And actually I want to show you or say you that these involve more series of steps. It's not only step one to step two. Actually you will see that there are step one, then you go to step two, step two to step three, step three to step four and step five. So of course the overall is this one. But you cannot ignore these ones. So that's what we are going to see actually. And let me show you the active intermediate is essentially a high energy molecule. Just like that, someone stumbled up or shocked or collided with it and it has extra energy. Let's say this is A, maybe M comes here, has a collision here and maybe all the he was it, this molecule was spinning f so fast instead of spinning he the molecule will send all the energy here it's here this will stay a little bit not that it's not spinning that much but this energy is changed into internal or vibrational or whatever energy you want to call it it's going to be active so you got a plus m they collide and m is now excited or high energy content and the thing here is this is not stable eventually with time it's going to get lost because of course this molecule is going to crash or collide with another molecule and this is what some free, free radicals are probably you've heard the concept free radicals especially while burning or food or whatever industry you're hearing maybe you hear free radicals and you know that they are bad it, in general, yeah, they're bad because you cannot control them and they are so fast that you cannot actually account for them as a substance but better as an active intermediate or, of course, the name free radical. I want to show you this theory, uh, but I think it's important to show it in another video, so let me stop the video and see you in the next one.
What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.